Well, new job numbers out today paints a slightly better picture of the nation's unemployment. The Labor Department reports the jobless rate fell to 8.6 percent. Here is how the mainstream media is reacting to the news today. A significant drop in unemployment for November, going from 9% to 8.6%. Unemployment rate drops to its lowest level since March of 2009. So if they're not high-fiving in the White House this morning, they at least have to be breathing a sigh of relief. It shows you that there's hiring. There's hiring again, slow but steady hiring. Well, it certainly is good news in that the trend is moving in the right direction. You get good news like this every month, and his re-election path will get, will get easier, certainly. Now on the surface, the decline in unemployment looks like positive news. After all, it's the lowest levels of unemployment in the U.S. since March of 2009. And 120,000 private jobs were created in November. But if you dig deeper, you'll find there's not really much to celebrate at all. That's because about half the decline is due to people giving up on finding work. 315,000 people simply stopped looking. There are currently more than 13 million people out there that are out of work in the U.S. So what is the real state of the economy these days? Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Journal, is here to help me dig deeper into this. Welcome, Gerald. Now, 8.6 percent, that's better than the 9 percent that we saw the month before. But when you count those that stopped looking for work, we just saw those numbers, those that are underemployed, um, it paints a really different picture. What is the real state of unemployment today? Well, look at the stock market. Ask Dow Jones how elated he was today. On the first blush of the news, it went up over 100 points, and then it ended the day flat. And when you look at the real numbers and who got the jobs, it's food stamp employees. Oh, there were jobs created in retail. You know those wonderful jobs where you take people's money and you say, have a nice day. And there were jobs in hospitality. That's another word for cleaning up somebody's room. Oh, and there were jobs in health care, you know, working in nursing homes, making sixty-two fifty a week by the time after taxes. You know, so these aren't real jobs. This is a plantation economy. And the big lie that no one's talking about as they pump up this weak number is that Liz. You need 125,000 jobs a month, a month, just to account for the new people moving into the economy and population growth. So that leaves all the people that have lost all these jobs since the Great Recession hit still out of work. And, um, well, these numbers um, are really good news for President Obama because when it comes to getting reelected, these unemployments really matter. So is this kind of a, a victory uh, for, for President Obama? I mean, the election oh, sure. is not too far away. Sure. He's, well, you know, by the time the election comes around, this will be long forgotten. But any little boost in the numbers, and you see the way they spin them, or lie about them, I should say. Spin is a polite word for lying. You know, sure, he's going to look better, because then you have the Republicans on the other end saying, you know, you know we got to... You know, we're going to cut Social Security, we're going to do away with Medicare. You know, so you have the Republicans on the other end promising nothing and Obama pretending to deliver a lot when he's coming up with nothing. And that is why you predict that President Obama is going to win the presidency. At this point, yes. And, um, you know, Gerald, I wanted to bring uh, another point up here. Um, you would think now with the economy the way that it is that that would be the focus on repairing the economy. But just yesterday, the Senate passed a bill, a $662 billion defense bill. So money is being pumped into expanding the military, setting up military bases. Considering the economic state of the nation, why is more money being pumped into military operations? Well, there's that other bill, too, you might want to mention, the Senate bill that passed 97 to 3, that gives the military the right now to, you know, arrest anybody, a person like me, that really doesn't dig what's going on in a lot of places, and call me a terrorist. I have no lawyer, no rights. I'm gone. Woof, they ship me overseas. You know, anything. So why is it happening? It's very simple. It's a very old story. It was told many years ago by General Dwight D. Eisenhower, 
five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces, two-term president, a Republican at that, hardly what you would call in those days a pinko liberal, and warning the American people that the military-industrial complex is taking over the country. Does anyone need any more proof than the bill that you just talked about and the one that I just talked about? This is unprecedented in American history. And, and but why are we seeing this? Um, why are we seeing more money being pumped into the military um, and not more money being spent uh, on job creation? I mean, what does it say about, about the priorities? Well, that's what I'm saying. The military's taken over the country. And I didn't say it. Just as General Dwight D. Eisenhower warned, follow the money. How could America be in all of these foreign countries, and as you pointed out, now expanding into Australia, as, you know, look what's going on in Detroit. They're going bankrupt. Look what's going on in the Bronx and Cincinnati and St. Louis. Hey, how about taking a couple of walks away from D.C. over there and walk into the ghettos if you want to have a lovely evening and not make it home at night? You know, how come they're not bringing the money at home? It's very simple. It's the people in charge have a different agenda, and their agenda is war. Look, on this new bill that was just passed that I mentioned, this Lindsey Graham, or Graham Lindsey, the cracker from South Carolina, he said the United States is a battle zone. Could you imagine that? So that's what's happened. They've turned the whole country into one big homeland security and the priorities on military. Um, well, Gerald, uh, you, you are a, a master of predicting things. You've predict, successfully predicted things in the past. Um, what is your prediction for the future here? I mean, uh, going back to the, the unemployment numbers, are we seeing the beginning of a trend, or is this just a, a, a slight uptick and, you know, well, we're going to see a regression in the months to come? What is your prediction? Oh, it's going to get much worse. As a matter of fact, we're coming out with our top trends for 2012. And one of them is going to be economic martial law. We're going to go into an economic 9-11. What they're doing, Liz, is they're pumping this up to get the people to spend the last pennies that they don't have on Christmas junk. And you saw it with all the hype of this Black Friday. They're not solving the problems over in Europe. The European Union is collapsing. The European Monetary Union, what did they do? They just came out with credit ratings and showing 15 of the banks have lowered their, lost their credit ratings. They've been degraded. The same day they come out and the central banks around the world are pumping trillions of dollars into them to keep it afloat. When the new year comes, the winter of discontent is going to set in and reality is going to bite. Wow. Um, Gerald, uh, pleasure to have you on the show as always. That was publisher of the Trends Journal and director of the Trends Research Institute, Gerald Salente.